A very good morning to all of you. Today we will start a, a very important topic that is electromagnetic induction. Till now we have been studying magnetic fields produced by current carrying conductors, forces between current carrying conductors and so on. So remember I had shown you a demonstration which Hans Christian Oisted had done in 1820 to show that currents produce magnetic fields, current carrying conductors produce magnetic fields. And then we studied uh, magnetic fields produced by a straight current carrying conductor, current magnetic fields produced by a solenoid and so on. Now today what I am going to discuss is a very, very important topic in electromagnetics and that is electromagnetic induction. So when uh, it was shown that electrical currents create magnetic fields, the obvious question that arose is can magnetic field produce currents? Can magnetic fields produce current? That means can I use a magnetic field to generate current? So a lot of experiments were carried out by many scientists by placing very strong magnetic fields, magnets around conductors, by passing current through conductors close to another conductor and they did not find much successful results in generating currents. Until Michael Faraday in 1831 did a series of extraordinary experiments to show that to generate current I need a changing magnetic field. Something should change and that change will result in an electrical current. Now Michael Faraday was a very famous scientist, British scientist and he has contributed significantly to electromagnetics, electrochemistry and so on. He lived in the period uh, Michael Faraday Seventeen ninety one to eighteen sixty seven. So he did some outstanding experiments in electromagnetics. And also electrochemistry. He also introduced study diamagnetic properties. He was an excellent experimentalist and in fact Albert Einstein had a picture of Michael Faraday in a study room along with pictures of Sir Isaac Newton and also James Clerk Maxwell. We will study about Maxwell's equations later on. But Michael Faraday was a very, very important scientist in the, in the development of electromagnetics and today what I am going to show you is some experiments similar to what Michael Faraday did at that time to show relationship between magnetic fields and currents. We have till now studied that currents produce magnetic fields. I will now show you that it is also possible to generate currents using magnetic fields but under certain situations. So let me first show you uh, a solenoid which I have wound uh, by taking a piece of copper wire and here is a solenoid and these are the two ends and you can see here there are windings around the solenoid and this solenoid as you know can create an, a, mag a magnetic field. So this is one solenoid, there is another solenoid here which is a smaller solenoid and that has a larger number of windings and I want to show you that this solenoid will produce magnetic field. So what I do is here is a compass. Here is a compass which uh, produces, which is, uh, which contains the north and south poles and I connect this solenoid to a, a battery and you can see immediately the, the magnetic coil is rotating. Then this particular solenoid generates magnetic field. So this is essentially an experiment to show that currents generate magnetic fields. Now I want to show, I want to see whether magnetic fields can generate currents. Now before that I want to show uh, there are two permanent magnets here which I had shown in an earlier 
experiment. These are two permanent magnets, very strong permanent magnets. And as you can see here, it has a very strong effect on uh, the, the needle. So this is a soft iron piece, a larger number of pieces of soft iron. And uh, this is uh, formed into a, a cylinder here, a larger number of pieces. And this particular uh, piece, I connect to a magnet. The moment I put a magnet here, the magnetic field of the magnet actually gets concentrated into this and this soft iron piece gets magnetized and has a magnetic field associated with it. So this particular, this is now becoming a, a slightly long magnet. So what I want to show, see is whether this magnet, this magnetic field produced by this structure can generate electric currents. Now for this, what I have done is here I show you uh, a galvanometer. You can see here in the other part, this is a galvanometer. There is another solenoid and this solenoid is connected to the galvanometer. So this is one terminal of the solenoid another terminal of the solenoid. There is no source of current in the solenoid and so the galvanometer is showing zero reading. The galvanometer can shift to the right or to the left depending on the direction of the current. For one direction of current, the needle will shift to the right. For a reverse direction of the current, the needle shifts to the left. So depending on the direction of the current, the needle of the galvanometer will shift to the right or to the left. And so we will now investigate this. So this magnetic magnet now, what I want to do is I want to uh, put this inside this solenoid so that this magnetic field associated with the solenoid. So there is a magnetic field which is connected to the solenoid. So now you see there is a strong magnet within the solenoid. There is a strong magnetic field, but it does not generate any current. So a static magnetic field connect which is uh, around a circuit or coil does not create any magnetic field, any current in this, in this coil. Now what I want to show you is if I change the magnetic field by pulling out or pushing in this soft iron piece, I will generate a current in the galvanometer which will be seen in the galvanometer. So what I am going to do is the following, I am going to pull the soft iron piece out of the solenoid or push it in. So what am I doing? Because there is a magnetic field associated with the soft iron piece which is connected to a magnet, there is a magnetic field associated with the soft iron pieces and when I pull the soft iron piece, I am changing the magnetic field encircled by the solenoid. So I am changing the magnetic field whether I pull it or push it, I am increasing or decreasing the magnetic field so which, is, which, is, uh, which is encircled by the solenoid. So this was one of some of the experiments carried out by Michael Faraday. So let me show you. So here is the uh, current in the, uh, in, the in the galvanometer. You can see. Now let me pull the solenoid, the soft iron piece out of the solenoid. You see the needle shifted to the right, and there was a short current generated when I was pulling it out. So when I pull the, uh, the soft iron piece out of the solenoid, I am changing the magnetic flux in the solenoid, and that change in magnetic flux generates a current. Now please note that when I pulled the soft iron piece out of the solenoid, the current was generated where the needle shifted to the right of the zero. Now I want to do the same experiment but push the soft iron piece into the solenoid and to see what just happens. Okay, now let me push the solid, uh, let me push the soft iron into the solenoid. As you can see here, when I push the soft iron piece into the solenoid, the current generated is to the left. So when I pulled out, so for example, let me pull it out again. If I pull it out, the needle shifts to the right. And if I do not move the soft iron piece, there is no current. So the current got generated only when I was moving the soft iron piece or when I was changing the magnetic field. So now if I push it here, the current is again generated as I am moving and the current is now opposite to the direction of the current that I was produced before. Now let me pull it and push it very slowly. If I pull it out very slowly, the amount of current generated is very little. As you can see here, there is a, the needle shifts to the right, very little, very little current. If I stop, the current becomes zero. If I move it into the solenoid at a slow pace, there is a very small amount of current generated, but it is to the left. So it's the opposite direction current. So it looks like the current generated also depends on the speed at which I am moving the, moving the soft iron piece. So if I move it fast, it moves quite to the right. If I move it 
quickly here, then it moves to the left. So, two things I am observing that there is no current generated if the magnetic field remains constant. The magnetic field produced by the soft iron piece which is going through the solenoid is remaining constant if I do not move the magnet and in that case there is no current generated. If I pull the soft iron piece, I am changing the magnetic field as a function of time and as long as I am moving there is a current generated and I have also shown you that the current generated depends on the rate at which I am pulling it which means the current generated depends on the rate of change of magnetic field. Now, we will quantify this through equations a little later, but it is important to notice that the current generated in the circuit depends on the rate of change of magnetic field. And the second observation which I have seen is if when I am pulling the current is in one direction, when I am pushing the iron piece the current is in the reverse direction. So, it also depends on the direction of the current in the circuit depends on whether the magnetic field is increasing with time or decreasing with time. So, again we will quantify this and understand this. So, let me repeat once more, here is my solenoid, here is the galvanometer, I, I pull it and it moves to the right and if I stop pulling it, there is no movement. If I push it, it moves to the left. Again, as long as I am pushing, it is moving, if there is a current, but then it comes to 0. So, if I move it very slowly, there is some current generated, but very little current generated as compared to fast motion to the right here and if I move to the left, then it is a small current generated. If I move very slowly, there is hardly any current generated. So, the rate of change of magnetic field decides the amount of current generated. So, that is one experiment. Now, let me do another experiment with the same. So, what I have done here is I have moved the magnetic I have moved the magnetic uh, soft iron piece with the solenoid. Now, let me fix the iron piece and move the solenoid. So, if I move the solenoid to the left, I am not I am not moving this iron piece, but I am moving the solenoid. If I move the solenoid to the left, there is current generated. If I move it to the right, again current is generated. So, you see if I move it like this, there is a current to the right. If I move it like this, there is a current to the left. Very interesting that the same kind of current is generated irrespective of whether I move the magnet with respect to the solenoid or the solenoid with respect to magnet. This is a very, very important concept that whether the magnet is moving with respect to the coil or the coil is moving with respect to the magnet, I am generating a current in the coil. So, again let me show you here. So, I move the solenoid to the left and there is a current generated. If I move the solenoid to the, to the other side, then is opposite current generated, very similar to exactly similar to what happens when I move the magnet rather than the coil. So, that is another very, very important observation. The amount of current generated depends only on the relative motion between the magnet and the coil. That is a very, very important consideration now. Now, let me do another experiment which Michael Faraday did at that time. So, I remove the permanent magnet and I take another solenoid. Here is another solenoid which I am taking. I take the solenoid which has two wires here and I place the solenoid around this soft iron piece. So, let me remind you that if I connect this to a current source, if I current the solenoid, connect the solenoid to a current source, that current source will pass current through this small solenoid. That small solenoid will then gen generate a magnetic field. That magnetic field will then pass through this second solenoid and then I will show you, I will check whether there is a magnetic field genera current generated in the second coil or not. So, for this I take a battery, this is a battery here 9 volt battery. So, I connect this to the solenoid, to one of the first solenoid here. So, you see if I when I connect there is a movement, when I disconnect there is a movement, but when there is no there is constant current for example here, I am constantly passing a current, there is no current in the sec in the second transform in the second solenoid. If I disconnect there is a current in the, uh, in the solenoid connected to the bat the galvanometer, if I connect again there is a uh, current generated in the solenoid, if I disconnect there is a current. So, I do not need a magnet to generate a current, a current in the solenoid, in the solenoid a current which is passing through the solenoid generates a magnetic field, that magnetic field is passing is encircling, encircled by this solenoid which is connected to galvanometer. So, when I connect this first solenoid into the battery source, I pass a current through the solenoid 
and that current generates a magnetic field and only you can see here the current is there only when I connect at the point of connection or when I disconnect. If there is a constant current flowing through the coil, there is no current generated in the galvanometer. As you can see here, the moment I disconnect there is a deflection, the moment I connect there is a deflection. So, in this case, in the first case, the magnetic field was produced by a permanent magnet, a permanent magnet and through this soft iron piece. So, irrespective of whether I move the magnet with respect to the coil or the coil with respect to magnet, I am seeing an induced current generated in the, in the coil. Secondly, the direction of the induced current depends on whether the magnetic field is increasing with time or decreasing with time. Then I did an experiment in which I have a solenoid in which I pass the current, this solenoid. So, so the, the, this solenoid when I pass the current generates a magnetic field, that magnetic field passes through this solenoid and when I connect a battery to this solenoid, I am changing the magnetic field generated by this solenoid and the change in magnetic field seems to induce a current in this solenoid. If I disconnect, again the magnetic field goes from maximum to 0. In that process, I again generate a current in the solenoid. The direction of the current in the two cases are opposite to each other. That is a very, very important consideration we must know. So, as you can see here, there is a magnetic field generated irrespective of whether I move the magnet with respect to coil or I move the coil with respect to magnet or I have another coil which, which is producing a magnetic field and I change the current in that second other coil. So, all these are producing a, a current in the in the solenoid and that current is called an induced current and that induced current seems to be appearing whenever the magnetic field changes. So, when I move the magnet inside the solenoid, I am changing a magnetic field through the solenoid and it induces a current. When I move the solenoid and fix the magnet, I am changing a magnetic field through the solenoid which also induces a current. I put another coil near this coil and change the current in the mag in the coil and I change I change the current passing through the coil which changes the magnetic field passing through this uh, coil in which I am measuring the current and that induces the current. So, these were some observations which Michael Faraday did in 1831 and which uh, which opened up the entire field of electromagnetic induction and which is today a very, very important part of modern machinery including transformer generators and so on which are all um, working on the principle of electromagnetic induction. So, a current produces a magnetic field, a constant magnetic field does not generate a current. A changing magnetic field seems to be generating a current and this is called Faraday's law of induction and we will discuss the mathematical principles behind the Faraday's laws of induction. So, what, have, what all have I shown? Uh, moving a magnet near a coil generates the current in the coil. Moving the coil in front of a magnet generates a current in the coil. The direction of current depends on the movement, the, uh, the movement towards or away. Uh, placing another coil nearby and changing current through that coil generates a 
current. So all these observations were essentially coming out of the experimental experiment that you have performed. So we will quantify all this into what is called as Faraday's law of induction. A very, very important part of electromagnetics. Okay, now I want to show you another interesting experiment of uh, magnetic levitation in which I will show you that using magnetic forces we can suspend an object. And some of these principles are today used in uh, magnetic, magnetic levitation trains, maglev trains. So I want to show you another experiment in which I will use another property of magnetic fields and mag induced currents to levitate a another object. Yeah, now let me connect to the other circuit. So I want to show you some very interesting experiment, uh, which is an experiment which shows how magnetic effects can lead to levitation. So this is a variac, which actually uh, decreases the 220 volts which is coming on the main line to any voltage which I want by rotating this knob here. This is connected to the same solenoid as before and there is a soft iron inside and that soft iron piece is actually uh, concentrated in the magnetic field and as we have seen before, the magnetic field can become very strong inside the uh, solenoid because of the presence of the soft iron piece because the soft iron gets magnetized and that magnetized material produces its own magnetic field adding to the magnetic field produces, produced by the current and which results in a very, very strong magnetic field. So I want a strong magnetic field inside the solenoid and I have put a piece of aluminum here that is an aluminum uh, piece. Uh, no, please remember that aluminum is non-magnetic, it does not get attracted to magnets as you can see here, it is not getting attracted to a magnet at all, this is non-magnetic and so this is an aluminum piece and I am going to pl place this inside the, inside the soft iron piece. Now what I am going to do is the following, so let me explain, I am going to, so it is just connected to the, to the variac, right now the variac has 0 voltage, so there is no current passing through the solenoid. And I have connected uh, this uh, through a resistance here just to make sure that I have control on the current that is passing through the solenoid. So now what I am going to do is I am going to slowly increase the current in the, in the solenoid and as I increase the current, the magnetic field increases and please remember the current which is passing through the variac and through this is a alternating current. The current is changing with time, it is changing at the rate of 50 times per second and it is a 50 hertz current. So the current is continuously changing with time, which implies that the magnetic field generated by the solenoid is changing with time at 50 hertz. And so the flux passing through this, the magnetic, magnetic fields seen by this is changing with time at the, at the rate at which the current is changing with time. So as we have seen in the earlier demonstrations, a changing magnetic field induces a current in a, in a material. And so what will happen is when I change my current here, I will induce a current in this aluminum piece and we will see what happens now. So let me start to increase the current in the, uh, sol in the, sol in the solenoid and I put a, a screen here so that it becomes very visible. So I, now let me start to increase my current here and you can see here the, met the aluminum ring is floating in air. It is uh, floating because of the magnetic repulsion between the solenoid and the aluminum piece. Now let me reduce the current, as I reduce my current the piece comes back to the original position. If I increase my current here again, the aluminum, the aluminum piece lifts itself and I can raise it to quite a height here by changing the magnetic, by, uh, by inducing currents here. So what is actually happening is the current through the solenoid is changing with time. That changing current in the solenoid changes the magnetic field passing through this uh, soft iron piece. That changing magnetic field which is changing through this aluminum now ring is inducing a current in the ring. These are called eddy currents. Those currents are in a direction so as to oppose the change as we will discuss. And so there is a repulsion between the solenoid and the current that is passing through the aluminum leading to a repulsion and a levitation. So it is called magnetic levitation. As you can see here, you can have an iron piece floating up above the solenoid simply by having an oscillating magnetic field here. So that is a very interesting demonstration of uh, 
how changing magnetic fields can be used to lift up objects leading to what we call as levitation, magnetic levitation that means you can lift objects above the surface simply by using magnetic fields. So now we will move on to some discussion and, and try to understand what is actually happening in the case of uh, the, the what is actually happening in, in terms of physics, we will write, write down some equations and try to discuss the mathematical structure behind uh, what we have been seeing. So let me recall now again. So this was in 1831, Michael Faraday. demonstrated this uh, experiment to show magnetic induction. So what we have seen is the following, if I have two coils, one coil for example here and another coil here, so this coil is closed and if I change the current, changing current in this coil, in coil let me call, call, call it coil A, induces a current in coil B. So there is a, if I change the current through this coil, coil A, it produces a magnetic field which is changing on the circuit and this, in this coil there is a current generated, this coil, I call, call it coil B. Now, if I also move this relative to each other, either coil A towards coil B or coil B towards coil A, I will have again induced currents in coil B because of the magnetic field generated by the coil A. I also showed that if I have a coil and if I bring a magnet, either I move the magnet like this or like this, there is induced current. So current gets induced in this, in this coil here, whether I move the magnet towards the coil or away from the coil and I showed you that the amount of current generated here depends on the rate at which I am moving. If I move faster, I generate more current, if I move slower, I generate less current. What I did not show here is another interesting part. So if I, for example, take a region containing a uniform magnetic field pointing downwards into the page as I am plotting here and if I take conductor like this, for example, and if I place another conductor here, so there is a uniform magnetic field in this space and if I move this conductor. So this conductor, this, this is now a circuit and if I move this conductor, I am changing the area of the circuit. When I do that, I find current is induced in the circuit. So if I move this faster, the current is more, if I move it slowly, the current is less. So there are multiple situations in which current gets in, in, induced in a coil and all these observations have led us to what we call as Faraday's law of, law of induction. Now one thing that is uh, significant and we need to understand is the following, that suppose I have a, which I showed you, if I have a magnet and if I have a coil, whether I move the magnet towards the coil or the coil towards the magnet. I showed you there is induced current. So I fix the coil here, move the magnet, I have induced current, if I move the magnet forward and backward, I fix the magnet, if I move the coil backward and forward, I have induced current, same induced current. 
whether if I whether I move this or move this, I generate the same induced current in the coil. And so it only depends on the relative motion between the coil and the magnet. But look here, what is the physical explanation for this induced current? In one case in which I have the magnet fixed, but the coil moving towards the magnet. So, for example, if I if I fix the magnet and move the coil towards the magnet, the coil the mag the, the, the circuit here contains for example, let me take a circuit like this. So, this is this is a circuit for example. So, if I have a circuit here and a magnet, if I move I showed you that if I move the magnet towards the circuit, I generate magnetic field uh, sorry I generate a current in the circuit. If I move the circuit towards the magnetic uh, magnet, I also generate the same current in the circuit. Now, let me try to understand why there should be a current generated when I move the circuit towards the magnet. Now, you see here the circuit this material contains electrons free electrons conductor. So, when I move this coil towards the magnet, the electrons in the in the in the wire gets velocity in this direction. There is a magnetic field generated by the magnet and we know that there is a Lorentz force acting on the electrons. The magnetic field produced by the magnet is acted upon as acting on the electrons in the conductor which are moving when I move the coil and that force I will show you leads to a current in this coil simple Lorentz force. So, there is a Lorentz force acting on the electrons in the in this in this coil and that Lorentz force results in a current in the coil. So, I can have an explanation for the induced currents when I move the circuit towards the magnet or away from the magnet. So, what happens if I move the magnet? Now, when I move the magnet the electrons in the conductor are not moving and I still induce the same current in the coil. This is a completely different explanation. There is no explanation with Lorentz force here because the electrons are I am not moving the conductor I am moving the magnet. So, as I move the magnet I am changing the magnetic field acting on the electrons and if I assume there is no current and there is no electron motion then obviously, there is no Lorentz force, but still there is an induced current. And this is the beauty of uh, Faraday's laws of induction. It only depends on the relative motion between the magnet and the coil. And in the second case, when I move the magnet towards the coil, actually the changing magnetic field induces an electric field. And that electric field generates a current in the circuit. Please remember if charges will move when there is a magnetic field because of Lorentz force, V cross V force, or because of an electric field. So, if I move the magnet, there is no Lorentz force, but there is a force due to electric field generated by the changing magnetic field that is a Faraday law of induction. So, the very very important law which we will discuss. So, let me write down the Faraday law of induction. So, let me uh, consider a path like this. So, for this I must define magnetic flux first. Remember uh, we had in electrostatics we were discussing Gauss's law and at, at that time we had defined an electro electric flux electrostatic flux and that was used to define um, the uh, Gauss's law. So, similarly we can define a magnetic flux. So, if B is the magnetic field then we define the magnetic flux is equal to integral B dot d a over a surface s is a surface. Remember E dot d a was the electric flux and we had defined Gauss's law in terms of electrostatic flux. Here we define the magnetic, magnetic flux which is integral B dot d a. Now, remember we had also shown that integral B dot d a is equal to 0. If you integrate B dot d a over a closed surface you get 0 because there are no magnetic monopoles. Magnetic field lines form closed loops. So, integral B dot d a over a closed surface is 0, but so please remember this is not a closed surface this is an open surface. So, it could be a surface like this. 
So, for example, if this is my, uh, this is the, this is a line, this is the, uh, sorry, so for example, circuit, and this could be the surface, the surface which is here on the surface. So, this could be the surface. So, I define V dot dA as the flux, this is the flux. So, according to Faraday's law, changing magnetic flux induces an electromotive force. EMF. You must have studied electromotive force when we were discussing uh, circuits. So, according to Faraday's law, any changing magnetic flux, flux will induce an electromotive force. So, electro, electro, uh, the flux is defined as minus d phi b by dt, which is equal to minus d by dt of integral v dot. this is the EMF here. So, a changing magnetic flux produces an electromotive force. That electromotive force is responsible for the generation of current in the circuit. You have seen electromotive force because of battery for example, earlier. A battery has chemical energy inside it. This battery has chemical energy. That chemical energy is, is a, a source of electromotive force. And when you connect, connect a wire outside, that electromotive force drives the current through the wire. The same current is flowing through the battery, so there is a complete circuit. Similarly, this is another form of electromotive force, and this is uh, because of a changing magnetic flux. And electromotive force is defined as integral over a path E dot, E is the electric field. Please remember, I am calling an electric field, not an electrostatic field. An electrostatic field, for an electrostatic field, we know that integral V dot dl over closed path is 0. So, this is an electric field. And this uh, induces an EMF defined by is the so this uh, is not a uh, electrostatic field this is an electric field and so we differentiate between electric and electrostatic field electric field set electrostatic field generate generated satisfy this condition electric field are not necessarily integral is not zero because there is a force which is driving the current through the circuit so Faraday's law of induction essentially implies that the EMF generated is minus of the rate of change of magnetic flux. This minus comes in because of what is called as Lenz's law. So, according to Lenz's law, whenever a change produces an electric current, the direction of the current of the induced current is so as to produce effect opposing the change. So, that is contained in this negative sign here. If 
d phi by d t is positive, induced E m f is negative. If d phi by d t is negative, induced electric field is positive. So, this is a an important aspect of uh, the induced electromagnetic electri induced current and that current according to Lenz's law is so as to oppose any change. So, if you are for example, if this is my if this is my coil and if I have a magnetic field passing through this coil, what this says is if I change the magnetic flux through this coil by either moving a magnet towards the coil or away from the coil or by placing another circuit nearby whose current is changing or by fixing a magnet and moving this up and down. Either way, whenever the flux through this changes, there is an induced current. If the flux is increasing with time, the induced EMF will be such that there is a current generated in this circuit which opposes this change. That means, it will try to oppose the change in increase of flux. Similarly, if the flux is decreasing with time, the induced current will, will adjust itself so that the it opposes any reduction in the flux through this through the circuit. Now, let me rewrite this law here. There are there is an important part here which we need to understand. So, this law is integral over source path is equal to minus d by dt of integral dot d. So, C is the path of integration. and S is the surface with uh, path C as boundary. Now, again let me try to show you a demonstration to help you to understand what is this, what, what is the meaning of this. So, suppose this was my coil. So, let me assume a planar coil. So, I can have a coil which uh, which is like this. So, if I I could have a planar coil like this. So, that is my coil. So, I must be careful in choosing the path direction of integration for the path of integration and the corresponding surface. And here I must choose the right handed rule. So, if my path of integration is like this, then you see that the right handed screw implies that the surface area must be like this, because the right handed screw rotates like this. So, if I rotate like this, if my path of integration is like this, the area must be pointing up. If my path of integration is like this, the area must be pointing down. So, this d a here is related to the direction in which I am doing this line integral. So, if I integrate from here like this, if this path closed path is starting from here and going like this, then because right handed screw implies that this rotation must be towards me, area of integration d a is pointing up. If I integrate like this in the other direction from here to this closed path, the area is downward. So, please keep track of this because that involves the sign here and we must be consistent between the chosen path of integration defined in the circuit C here and the surface S. Now, I must make sure, I must make clear that the surface need not be the surface which is flat here. All that we need is the surface of integration must have this as the boundary. So, the same surface for example, for the same path for example, I could have a surface which is like this. So, I can have the same and this this will be d a. Here is d a. The, the circuit or the path of integration is only the boundary of the surface. So, for example, here I could have this flat surface as the surface and this is my path of integration that is the flux or I could have for example, the same the same path of integration from here to here, but that is my surface. So, path of integration is like this, but that is my surface. 
I can choose any surface which, which is such that this path of integration is the boundary of the surface. Please remember this is not a closed surface, this is an open surface. So, this is the path of integration and that is my surface. So, if I integrate like this, my path of integration, the area vector is pointing outward. If I integrate like this, the area integral here is pointing inward. So, there has to be consistency between the path of integration in my line integral here and the surface integration here with dA. So, let me show you some examples here. So, for example, I could have a path like this uh, with, so if I do an integration like this, the area will be like this and suppose I had a magnetic field in this direction, that is my area. So, here, uh, so let me call it number 1, magnetic flux. phi b is integral b dot d a is greater than 0, because b dot d a is b a cos theta and cos theta is positive. So, the flux is greater than 0. So, if, if b increases with time, then d phi by d b, d phi by d t is greater than 0. So, if the magnetic field is increasing with time, the flux is positive and d phi by d t is greater than 0. This implies the induced EMF which is minus d phi by e by d t is less than 0. Now, this area is I am plotting up, up, upwards here. So, the, the curve of integration is like this and because B is negative, uh, because the induced EMF is negative, induced EMF must be like this. Please note here, that is my area. So, let me uh, look at the coil again. Yeah. So, that is my, that is my coil. And in this coil, I have, suppose I do this integration like this, the area is pointing up. Let me assume the magnetic field is pointing like this. So, B dot d a integral is positive. If the magnetic field is increasing with time, then d phi by d t is positive, which means induced EMF is negative. So, if I integrate like this, I will get a negative value, which means that the induced EMF must be in this direction, which will induce a current flowing in this direction. Now, see in this circuit, the current is flowing like this because of induction, because the magnetic field is changing with time, the flux through this is changing with time, increasing with time actually. Because it is increasing with time, it induces an EMF in this direction, which induces a current in this direction. Now, what is the direction of the magnetic field produced by this current? This current produces a magnetic field opposite to the direction of the magnetic field that you are increasing. Magnetic field that you applied is in this direction. A current like this will produce a magnetic field in the downward direction, which is essentially opposing this increase in flux. So, please note the current is induced, which is trying to oppose the change in the magnetic flux. It is not opposing the magnetic field, it is opposing the change in the magnetic field. It is change, it is opposing any change in magnetic flux. If you are trying to increase the flux, the current is induced such that it tries to decrease the flux. If you are decreasing the flux, the current induced tries to ensure that the flux does not decrease as fast as you are trying to decrease. So, it is a kind of an inertial effect, inertia that is happening. So, for example, let me take another situation. So, I have the same, same coil and area is here, magnetic field is this. Is. Again, magnetic flux. Uh, phi b is equal to integral b dot d a is greater than 0. 
uh, if b decreases with time, then d phi by d t is less than 0 and induce e m f is greater than 0, because that is minus d phi by d t. And because of this area like this, this is my path of integration, so e m f will be So, the direction of EMF now is opposite to the earlier case because the magnetic field is now decreasing with time rather than increasing with time. So, let me leave uh, two problems for you. Try to work out what will happen if I have the same area, this is the area A here and magnetic field is downward, B increase. what is the direction of emf and four the same a b b decreasing with time what is the induced emf direction and this will uh, make you understand that the direction of integration for the line integral for the path of integration relationship between that and the flux and we need to be very careful of uh, using the right signs in these cases. Also for example, uh, if I had uh, a circuit like this, let me assume I have a magnet here with magnetic field lines coming like this. So, okay, this is a magnet, uh, this is the north pole of the magnet, this is the south pole of the magnet. Now, if I move the magnet towards this coil, now remember uh, if I define my area is like this phi b integral b dot d a is greater than 0, magnet moving towards coil implies phi b increases with time. d phi by d t greater than 0. So, e m f which is minus d phi by d t is less than 0. So, if this is my path and I had defined my area here like this and my path of integration should have been this for this uh, integral and this is the less than 0 sorry path of integration must be like this the other way around because the area is pointing downward. So, the path of integration must be like this. So, induced current will be like this. So, when the magnet moves towards the coil towards the circuit here, it will induce a current in this direction. And as you can work it out that that induced current is trying to oppose the increase in magnetic flux through the coil. So, please work out the remaining situations, I will leave it as a problem to you. What will happen if I had the same coil, the same coil here, north pole, south pole and the magnet is moving like this and if I have south pole, north pole magnetic moving like this and then south pole, north pole magnetic moving like this. Please find the direction of induced currents.
find out the flux, choose a direction of integration, path of integration, you have a calculation of flux and from there you can find out the direction of induced current. So please look at this problem, very interesting problem to understand and that will make you understand the relationship between the path of integration for the EMF and the surface that I must choose for the integration. And again, I must point out the surface need not be the flat surface. As long as the path of integration is the boundary of the surface, that's fine. So I will stop here and in the next class, we will continue with discussion of uh, electromagnetic induction and we will consider some examples and I'll show you what kind of uh, fields are entered for uh, currents are induced in circuits. Thank you very much.